Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Sebastian Fitness Solutions. What is up everybody, this is Sunit Sebastian from Sebastian Fitness Solutions and in today's video I'm going to talk to you guys about the top 5 newbie fat loss dieting mistakes. Now these mistakes are, I, would, I can narrow down to some of the most common mistakes that newbies do specifically when they're trying to go on their fat loss journey and uh, it's by no means exclusive only for newbies, it could be done by even the most you know, advanced or I would say guys who've been training for many years. But more often than not, you'd see newbies making this mistake and uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. So the very first mistake, getting right into it, the very first mistake that I see newbies making for fat loss is crash dieting. Now, this is something that is done very common, especially with people who want these quick fix results. They want to lose weight fast. And it's seen that more often in women than men, I mean, you'll see more women following this crash dieting approach than men do, but by no means that you know, the men don't follow it. In fact, you know, uh, case in point, I started my whole fat loss journey by crash dieting. I didn't do it because I wanted a quick fix result. I didn't want to do it for losing weight fast, but I did because I thought that was the way to go for whatever reason. Anyone who knows my story knows exactly why. So long story short, why is this bad? The reason for that to understand this, you need to understand the difference between weight loss and fat loss. Both the same? Not really. Weight, your body weight can be made up of many things besides fat. It's got fat, but there's also got muscle. There's the amount of water in your body. There's, there's other tissues, your organs and whatnot, your bone, bone density and all that stuff. So all of these things together make up your body weight. And the loss of body weight can be a loss of you know, weight in multiple tissues. It could be loss of fat, but it could also be a loss of muscle. It could be a loss of water. So weight loss doesn't necessarily translate to fat loss. Fat loss is specific loss of fat mass, whereas weight loss could be a loss of weight, which is a combination of both fat mass and fat-free mass or lean body mass. So why do you want the, the latter versus the former. It's because when you lose weight you end, and you end up losing some muscle, let's say, you end up losing what gives you the tone and shape to your body. It's the muscle that gives you shape, tone and whatever look you know, that you want. And if you end up losing, let's say, a proportional amount of fat and uh, muscle, you know, an equal amount, then you'll end up being a smaller, shrunken version of the same self because you'll still be out of shape, you still won't look lean or you won't look fit, you'll probably have loose skin as well and a lot of things that won't be appealing. If you follow weight loss, trust me, the end result is not going to be what you, what you see is not going to be what you like. Okay? Another thing to keep in mind with these, this crash dieting approach besides the cosmetic thing or the cosmetic issues with it is the fact that it can cause some serious, serious health problems. And what I mean by that is, if you are crash dieting, you are malnourishing yourself, you're not eating enough nutrients. And there are some nutrients that, you know, that are called essential nutrients, which you have to provide the body through food. And if you don't do that, you end up being malnourished. And the consequences of that can, can take a toll on your health and well-being. You could have, you know, general weakness, you can have hair loss, you can have, it can affect the quality of your skin, of, you know, everything pretty much of your life. And you know, it can cause low sex drive, it can affect every area of your life, it can really affect your health. And you don't want to do that. So crash dieting, if any one of you is following that, please stop, do yourself a favor and stop. Because not only is it not really helping you get what you want, because the end result is not going to be very appealing, but it's also hurting you, hurting your health. You don't want to do that. Mistake number two that I see is this whole over-reliance on clean eating, or rather not tracking your calories and macros. So what I mean by this is that there are a lot of folks who believe that if they clean up their diet, if they stop eating junk food, if they stop eating you know, these foods that they think make them fat and they eat clean foods or healthy foods or whole foods, then there's no reason why they shouldn't lose fat and that's the ticket to losing fat is what they think. So they'll do things like, you know, they'll avoid like no junk food or, or no sugar or, or no carbs or no fat or no oil or whatever the, they, they want to exclude. They'll skip that and they think, well, this should guarantee fat loss for me. Well, that may work for some time because cutting out junk food and cutting out maybe say an entire group of food 
you know, would probably end up causing a la uh, maybe cutting down your caloric intake, and that's why you end up losing some weight, but it eventually stops. And then you're left wondering, what the hell happened? Well, you need to understand that there is no such thing that if you eat X number, X amount of food or X foods and you know, don't eat Y foods that you will guarantee fat loss. It does not work that way. If you want to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit. Okay, and that means that you need to eat less calories in your uh, burning, you know, than, uh, than you're expanding in the day. And thus you are in a caloric deficit. So if you aren't in a caloric deficit, no matter how many clean foods you're eating, no matter how many good foods you're eating, you are not going to end up losing fat. You're not going to end up losing weight. You're simply not. So if you are someone who's thinking, oh, well, I'm eating all the best of foods in the world. I'm eating only whole foods, home-cooked food, healthy foods, clean foods, but I'm not losing weight, you're more likely or more often, you know, very likely that you're probably, you know, not in a caloric deficit. And that's the reason why. So calculate your maintenance calories, either do it yourself or have a professional do it for you and figure out how many calories you need to eat to be in an appropriate caloric deficit, right? Mistake number three. And this is over-reliance, or again, reliance on calorie counting way too much. Now, this is the exact opposite, you know, the, the, the other side of the story, uh, the exact opposite example of what I gave in number two. And that is, you have some people who have understood the idea that, yes, you need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. And based on that idea, they have gone so deep into that, that they completely ignore everything else. And they think that all they need to do is be in a calorie deficit, and that's all that matters. A calorie is a calorie is a calorie. That's all they think and care about. And that again is wrong. Because yes, being in a calorie deficit is essential for weight loss. However, if you want that weight loss to be mostly fat loss, you also have to pay attention to your macros, especially your protein intake. Because if your protein intake is subpar, even if you are in a calorie deficit, yes, you will lose weight, you will end up losing muscle too. And again, tying into the whole weight loss versus fat loss concept. So if you're someone who believes or is checking out, you know, your uh, caloric intake and you're, you're making sure that you're in a deficit, take the extra step to ensure that you're eating your macros in the appropriate ratios as well, particularly your protein intake. You're eating enough to save as much muscle as possible. All right. There are other factors that come into play as well, you know, like meal frequency, meal timing, you know, protein dosage per meal. These things do make it do have some contribution to fat loss and overall success and body composition specifically, but not as much to an extent as caloric intake and macros or protein specifically. So keep that in mind as well if you're one of those people. That brings me to reason or other mistake number four, which is falling for scammy products and you know these weird teas and, and herbal herbs and you know detoxes and stuff like that. So there's been this whole, I wouldn't say fad, I would say more like this, this thing where, where you have a lot of these products that come out that claim to assist you in fat loss. And you have these big, you know, big, big personalities on TV endorsing them. You know, I don't want to name any names, but I'm <coughs> Dr. Um, Oz, um, but, but okay. <laughs> and you've got things like acai berry or you've got things like Garcinia Cambogia and these weird kind of plants or herbs and things like that that supposedly help you burn fat, you know, either assist you burn more fat or just help you burn fat when you're sitting at home. Guys, please understand that these do not work. They do not work. They are scammy products. And, you know, you've got to save yourself from these people who are trying to scam and get, make a quick buck out of you. Because there's nothing out there that's going to work. No pill, no potion, no tea, nothing, no detox specifically. Where do you even begin with detoxes? Your body doesn't need a detox. It has your liver to detox itself. Detoxes don't work. But anyway, the point here is that if you are being sold this by anybody, if someone's telling you or promoting this to you, they are ripping you off. It does not work. So stop wasting your money. Stop falling for this crap and just, just, just ignore it, right? Which brings me to the final mistake. The last one, number five, and that is this ridiculous kind of obsession, I would say, uh, with fat burners. And why I say this is because so many times, uh, I can't even count. Every time I get a fat loss question, especially from a young kid, you know, usually an 18 year old kid or something of that sort who's trying to lose some fat, he'll be like, I want to lose some fat. He won't ask me about diet. He won't ask me about anything. He'll ask me, should I take fat burners? Guys, fat burners are drugs or stimulants, okay, which people take and some of them do work, yes, 
but the extent to which they work, maybe max to max, probably 5% of an advantage in your fat loss or fat loss process, which for you as a beginner, okay, as, an, as a novice who has a lot of fat to lose, you do not need that stuff, man, because instead of focusing on, you're focusing on the thing that may give you, may give you 5% of an advantage, instead of worrying about the stuff that gives you 90% of the advantage, 90% uh, of the um, results, which is your diet, they, instead of focusing on improving and optimizing their diet, they think of things like fat burners, which doesn't make any sense. For people like you, it will, it, it literally makes no sense to think of a fat burner. You know who it makes sense for? For someone who is already very lean and ripped, pretty much, and wants to get shredded, at that point, his body is doing everything it can to fight losing more fat. And that could be whatever reason. By the way, it's not a healthy thing to do, even then. But maybe he's a competitive bodybuilder or something of that sort. Maybe then, to get that addition advantage, because he's in such a disadvantageous position, then it may make sense. But otherwise, hell no. And that aside, you should also understand that these fat burners contain stimulants and drugs, many of which are actually very dangerous. And you know, it can, if you take them and take them long enough, it can cause some serious problems to you, you know. It can cause, especially to do with your heart, you know, because a lot of them are stimulants and they end up stimulating your central nervous system or even end up causing racing heart and all these things. And if you are someone who has even the slightest of genetic predisposition to heart issues or something of that sort, you could just drop dead someday. And it has happened. I keep hearing news about you know, this young, uh, in, you know, enthusiast in fitness or bodybuilding enthusiast or this bodybuilder or this actor or whoever who's gymming a lot suddenly drops dead and, you know, whatever. And more often than not, stuff like protein and stuff gets blamed, but it's things like these, the drugs that they take, both over-the-counter fat burners and also possibly some, some uh, banned substances that they may be taking uh, that cause these things like this. And the question here is why? You're in this journey to improve your health and fitness, to be good, to feel good, to improve yourself. Why on earth would you want to do something to assist that goal, but possibly hurt your health, hurt your life? Why? It doesn't make any sense. Especially for you as a beginner, because for you, there's so much that you can do that will get you results so much easier than people like me or guys who've been training for many years. This is the best phase of your life, your training life. You can get results from doing the very least, you know. And if you aren't getting results, that means there's a very big thing, a very big essential thing that you're not doing right. So go fix that instead of working on these small tiny things. Make the most out of your this, this uh, beneficial stage you're in and believe me, you'll get the results that you deserve and the results that you want. So those are my top five newbie fat loss dieting mistakes. I hope you found them informative. I hope that if you happen to be falling for any of those, that you will fix that, correct it today itself and move from that negative or that, that uh, detrimental path and move on to a better one, one that will get you to your goals faster and, and uh, in a healthier way. Okay, so I really hope that this video was informative and if it has been, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button right now and drop a comment below and let me know if you have any questions about this video or if you just want to let me know how you like it. And uh, follow me on social media, all my social media links are in the description box below. And that's all the time I have for you today, but until next time, keep learning, keep growing. Hey, thanks for watching that video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also, click that button down below here to get some awesome gym merchandise like the one you see me wearing here. T-shirts, tank tops, wristbands, you name it, all of it's right there. So go ahead and check it out. And lastly, to watch another awesome video, click right over here.